22nd of January is a date that... Uh, I don't know, I wouldn't use those words, they're very strong words, obsession, frenzy, all this. The legacy of Baba should be a terms of reclaiming. Uh, well, I think this is uh, over 70 years overdue, if you ask me. So what about this obsession with Ram and this frenzy over the Ram temple, which of course now is going to be inaugurated? Where do you find this? Isn't it then misplaced? I don't know, I wouldn't use those words, they're very strong words, obsession, frenzy, all this. Because if somebody has to be an inspiration after seven, eight thousand years, there must be some element there, not for one or two people. For millions and millions of people, if someone has to be an inspiration after thousands of years, there must be something. If we don't see that something, then we will say it's an obsession, it is this, that. What but let me, let me come to this. And anyway, coming to the Ram temple, so Ram had a series of problems during his life. Even after thousands of years, he still has real estate issues. His real estate is not settled after thousands of years. So people who love him want to settle that real estate. I think it's settled, Supreme Court has settled it. So they want to build a temple. It is devotion. Why should it be termed as frenzy and obsession? Is it, let me use another word which again you will say is strong, isn't it divisive? Why is it divisive? Because it cuts across two communities. Really? It's been a bloody tale. And by bloody I mean a tale of blood, <laughs> a tale of killings, a tale of riots. What's happened in the last 800 years is the bloodiest tale that's ever happened in any part of the world ever. What happened to the Jews with Adolf Hitler? What happened to Native Americans with North America? What happened in Cambodia? All these things are nothing compared to what happened in India in these 800 years. And if you don't think that is bloody, and there is no any kind of remorse in people who committed those things, then just people want a small piece of real estate back for their asta, and that is divisive. Why is it divisive? I mark that you're using the word real estate and not temple. Is that deliberate? It is. It is real estate. But temple is built by devotees' hearts. The land is just real estate. But it's sacred for them because it is identified as a birthplace and obviously there's no question mark whether there was a temple or not. It is not one temple. Thousands of temples were raised because that's a policy that it must be raised and it will be raised in future also. Why we must be careful about what stand we take is, Ram is over six thousand years ago. <laughs> what he did, what he did not do, a lot of dissection happens in South India about him. North India doesn't dissect him, they just worship him. Southern India dissects him a little bit. But uh, an icon of six thousand years old who has inspired people towards righteousness, towards truthfulness, towards being compassionate to each other for generations, thousands of generations. You should not disturb that icon, doesn't matter historically what is right, what is wrong, because nobody really knows for sure. It's only this general story everybody knows where he went, what happened, what are the events of his life. What he did, why he did, you cannot dissect that, you're not his psychiatrist, but he's an icon who has inspired millions and millions of people across generations. You should not disturb that because humanity needs those icons. Geographically, was he born in Ayodhya? Yes. Was he born in this point? Come on. Do you know in which point you were born? Hello? Forget about a man six thousand years ago, you are still living. Do you know exactly at which spot your mother delivered you? I'm asking, does anybody know? No. So it's ridiculous argument. Now, Babur. Babur is the third generation after Genghis Khan. This Mongol empire, Mongols, slowly the, the word Mongol became Mughal in India, it's Mongol. This Mongol empire expansion for a period of ninety years to hundred years killed over forty million people, forty million people. Of those times, it was nearly ten percent of the world's population. You understand? Ten percent of the world's population, they killed not with a nuclear bomb, with swords, very energetic people. I'm saying, 
It takes a lot of activity to kill ten percent of the world's population, isn't it? Just with swords and spears. So wherever Genghis Khan went, he made a rule. All the male… all the males, wherever he conquered, all the males who are above the height of a cartwheel, those days the height of a cartwheel which went with the armies was always about like about thirty-eight to thirty-nine inches, about that much. Anybody who is above that height was killed. And then it is a practice of the Mongols to pile up all the severed heads into a big mountain. So the women were taken as slaves to service the soldiers or they were sold in various markets across Middle East, Europe, everywhere they were sold. So they spread like this, after Genghis Khan came Taimur Lung. Taimur Lung bore Babur, Taimur Lung came right up till Delhi, his empire. Then Babur came, Taimur Lung is supposed to have killed seventeen million people. In the cruelest possible way, what happened to the men is compassion. What happened to the women is another matter. I don't want to go into the descriptions. It is most terrible things happened to them. When Babur came, this is also the time of Guru Nanak. Guru Nanak, a very totally peaceful, non-reactive kind of human being, a realized being said, a messenger of death has come. And in Guru Nanak's own words, it is said, I'm paraphrasing, he said, he killed thousands of men wherever he went, in any town he went, kill all the men, burn the town down, capture the women and children. Women were brutally raped always in public because uh, it is a… it's not just… it is not just a rape, it is a lesson for everybody. And in thousands, Babur sold the Hindu woman in the markets of Kandar and Kabul, in thousands. Fortunately, he lived only for four years in India. He died. So the legacy of Babur should be erased from this country in every way. Above all, nobody should ever identify the present generation of Muslims with Babur because the atrocities that he was, he did not commit atrocity, he is an atrocity. Genghis Khan was not killing for religion, it's just power and conquest. Taimur Lung, also largely con conquest, slightly a religious tinge came, but Babur used the religious connotation very strongly and it gave him more power to kill because he thought he was doing jihad. Many times he ransacked Muslim towns also, Muslim populations also he killed. So he used religion very conveniently, according to his convenience. So him building mosques is not out of piety, not out of devotion, not for prayer. It is also an establishment of power. Whether it's a Hindu temple or a Jain temple, everything he broke, one prominent Jain temple he destroyed. Because in the cave what they had carved, the… the figures were naked, so he made sure the entire thing is destroyed. So this man and his legacy should be forgotten. Nobody should identify themselves with that because that is not going to lead to a good future.